Nikolai Kosterwalder, welcome to the IMDb show. Thank you. I've never had royalty on this set before until now. <laughs> this is really special. I mean, this is by far my number one favorite show on television, so this is very special. Thank you for being here. Let's start. What's your number? My number? Yeah. The dollar amount figure that I could pay oh. you to tell me. So you, you, you're asking me how much money would it take for me to reveal the ending of Game of Thrones? Right now. Fair yeah. enough, yeah. I have to ask you the same question. So you love the show. Love it. You've invested how many hours? Like seven seasons of, of time, 70 hours. And I'll just keep watching. going as well, yeah. How much money would it take for me to give you to spoil the ending? Like you have this great story and then I would tell you what happens, but it would ruin the whole thing, the the thing for you. Yeah. So then is it really weird how crazy people get about finding out the ending? But nobody wants to know when it no. comes to it. When we you ask them, so, okay, you really want to know? Mm -hmm. And then for a second, if they, they believe you that I'm about to say, they go, no, 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 don't. <laughs> You're crazy, what's wrong well, with you? Don't ruin it for everybody. Yeah. Um, so let's do this. You know, I know that none of us want spoilers, and I know it's really tough for you, but let me ask you uh, like this, nothing crazy. No. Just be cool. Give me something. What can we look forward to in the brand new season? It's, uh, it's coming right after the end of season seven. So it's, it's a great, it just carries on the story. Just, just goes, like one breath in, one breath no, out. No, Same no, no, there's, there's maybe a couple of weeks, but yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. That's fair enough, that's still pretty good. Um, you know, let's talk about Jamie Lannister. Yeah. What an amazing character, what a phenomenal role, yes. beautifully played. Um, you know, actors often create backstories for their characters mm -hmm. themselves to inform their performance. What is like a secret backstory that you created for Jamie that for yourself to use when you're performing? Well, I think a, a lot of the backstories is there. It's it's to be found. There's, you know, you have a guy who, who who grows up in these extreme circumstances, very dumb. You know, father who's who really um, is taking control of every every everyone. Uh, you have, uh, he lost his mother when he was two. Um, and then, of course, at the age of, when he's a teenager, teenager, he falls in love with the wrong girl. He should not fall in love with his sister, his twin sister. And that kind of keeps him in this weird vacuum for the rest, of, for many, many years. Um, so that's the backstory. And, I, and, and then, of course, you, 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 you go through, you make up all these other things. He always wanted to be a soldier. He wanted to prove, like so many sons, you want to, you want to, um, you want your father's approval, right? And and he's been begging for that, and he nothing's ever good enough for Tywin, of course. Um, so that's the backstory, and then the secrets. I think, and also the secrets were also given. The fact that everybody in this world views him as something that he, that he's not, or at least that the opposite of how he sees himself. Um, they see him as a, as a, as, you know, a dishonorable man. He sees himself as an honorable man, that like his word is, is so important to him. And the fact that he did break this oath, you know, he, his oath was to take care of the king right. at all costs. Right. You know, he was gonna, and then he ends up killing this guy. But the truth was, this guy was mad. He was gonna burn down this whole city, kill a million mm -hmm. people, I mean, you would think that you could get forgiveness, but no, because he met Ned Stark, the most honorable man honorable, in the world. Honorable, yeah. He couldn't get that kind of, he, would, he couldn't even get his say. You know, he didn't get his moment in court, if you will. So there's a lot of pen, you know, pent up aggression in Jamie, and that's what you see in the beginning. That's a long answer. I'll, I'll try to make the answer no, short. No, I'm with it. <laughs> Did you, you know, you spoke about the love affair that shouldn't have happened with him and his sister. Yeah. As an actor, when you took on this role, that I, I always imagined that there must have, I remember when I first saw it and how shocked I was that yeah. this is, what is the show I'm watching? Um, when you got the role, it's probably like super happy, you're probably super elated that yeah. you booked this role, but then you've got to explain to your folks, your, your loved ones, yeah. that you're gonna play a character that has to hook up with his sister. It's, I thought it was fantastic. I, I mean, I read it as like, this is the best way to start a character. Like he doesn't get, because he's so, it's so dark and it's so wrong and, and, and on every level. So you, it, already there you're kind of stretching the bow, like, you know, mm -hmm. okay, 
you know, this could go horribly wrong, but it could also turn out really exciting. And of course, I spoke to the guys, uh, Dan and David, and they, they told me the story of the, the first three seasons up until the point, he, you know, he loses his hand and you find out how he became known as the Kingslayer. So I, I, I knew it was going to be exciting. The whole thing about sister, I mean, I have two older sisters, so I have never really <laughs> gone into to the whole, oh, sister thing, because I don't think that's what, What's important, I think what's important is uh, that you fall in love with someone you shouldn't fall in love with and you cannot control yourself. And it's just, this is the woman of, you know, he wants to spend the rest of his life with, with, right. with, with Cersei and he wants to do anything to protect her and to be with her. Um, it's just a nice twist that uh, it's his sister because it's just morally so wrong. And, but of course, it's, and it's interesting when this, in this world, later on in the show, now of course we have a similar situation with, uh -huh. with Jon Snow, Snow and Daenerys, Daenerys, and that's kind of not so bad. No, we're, we're, because you, you soften the blow. Yeah, yeah, you, soften you, the blow. You basically and also, become a trendsetter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, incest is great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> From your lips to God's mouth, yeah. um, God's ears. Um, you know, one thing, there's only a few of you. Original season one, characters yeah. who are still alive yeah. in this final season. Uh, that must have been years of anxiety because we know <laughs> that George R. R. Martin loves to kill off his main characters. Yes. He's ruthless. So that must be a lot of tension. The greys must have come out from this. That was it, yeah. <laughs> was it? No, but you knew, I mean, the thing was he never, the books are still not finished. Sure. So there was that weird thing up until the, the season four, you kind of knew what would happen and we were still alive. But then it became Dan and David and, and the right. writers, and they were so tight-lipped. They never told you anything. So, you know, people would get these calls sometimes. So, you know, by the way, tomorrow you're going to get the scripts and you'll be gone by the end of, you know, episode three. So there was that tension. But I was never, I never expected to, I always thought that Jamie and Cersei together would probably go out, you know, season five or six. Okay. So the only time it got, I was kind of worried was when we knew that it was going to be, when we started season seven, we knew there was going to be an eight. The idea of, of, of not making it to the last final season was just because I was so curious to find out what was going to happen. I was like, oh, come on. You're so close. Yeah. Um, but you just, and if it was, you just wanted a great death, right? If, For sure. You want to go out. You want to go out in style. Yeah, it in style. Um, were there things... Taking us behind the scenes is like an actor on Game of Thrones. Are there things you can Well, I'll do? tell you something. Yeah. You know, it's funny because you said the original cast members. Mm -hmm. We shot the pilot 10 years ago this summer. The pilot was terrible. What do you mean? It, it was just one of those things where everything was... I mean, the story was the same, but just the choices were, were not right. Uh, and it's not because everyone was like... It was, same actors, like the same writers, the producers, um, you know, everyone were really good, directors, everything. But it was interesting because then we, in New York, before the premiere, Dan and David got the original cast members together and he, they, they showed us the original pilot, which was 95% was reshot. And you sit there, you go, wow, we are so lucky. We're so lucky that I think it was Richard Plepler from, from HBO actually said, that's great, let's, let's do this. Even though everyone else was like, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. What was so bad about it? It, but it was just the rhythm. It was so disjoint. It, like, there was no, I mean, there was, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't the worst thing ever, but it just did not have, it was not Game of Thrones as we know right. it. It was a, a completely different look. Um, the wigs, for example, there were a lot of wigs that was kind of a mix of Star Trek and I don't know. Did uh, Jamie have a different look? No, he no, he he had he the kept same. It cool. he, kept, okay. he kept the same look, <laughs> but it was just it was there was a lot of characters. Then of course there were some uh, uh, changes in cast as well. But that was not that was it was just a, it was just interesting to see how you know. Everyone says they can, a lot of people will say, well, the reason it, this was a success was because of this and that. The thing is, I think it's impossible to predict. You have to be so lucky and you have to find that, that magic thing where everybody, all the, you know, the bits just fit together. Right. And it was just interesting to see, because we're all sitting there watching it and we go, how, 
<laughs> the hell are we sitting here 10 years later? Because this is not good. And the interesting thing is today you see a lot of shows being ordered to series, mm -hmm. right? That didn't happen back then. You shot a pilot, and then if you were lucky, like we were, you would rework the pilot and then get to go to series. If Game of Thrones were today and had been ordered to series, like Lord of the Rings or like something, it would have been one season and then it would have been yanked off because right. it would have Everybody been like, it. like the party would have yeah. been so terrible. And anyway, that's a little uh, story, but I it was just that. interesting. I love that. I actually I had no clue uh, mm. about that story. Um, is there stuff, you know, when you're behind the scenes as an actor, it's all a family set, you know how important uh, Dan and David are, the writers. Yeah. As an actor, is there a, a fine line between, you want to be nice to the writers, like on a personal level, on a social yes. level, maybe give them a Rolls Royce to keep you in the next season, but then at the same point, they probably see you coming a mile off. Oh, here yeah. he is again. So what's that fine line between being a, a kiss ass and uh, annoying and uh, that, 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 that does not fly. What doesn't? You know. Kissing ass? Yeah, right. brown nosing. That's, I don't think that works anywhere. I mean, I think, most people, you know, <laughs> you'll be found out quickly. Yeah, they um, see you coming. And yes, and you work, I mean, but also the thing about this, that's one of the things about Game of Thrones is like when people say, what are you gonna miss? Obviously, I'm gonna miss the people. Of course. Because we spent so much time together and they're so great and we didn't have any, it was quite amazing. We've had so, I mean, the cast of literally hundreds and, and a crew of thousands haven't had any assholes, and that's unique. You know. Not in real life, with plenty of assholes when it comes down to the actual characters. Oh, yeah, the characters, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, 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 for sure. Um, you, you said what you will miss is obviously the people, the cast, uh, the family. That must be just devastating to know that you know life is moving on in different ways, but also super exciting. What yeah. won't you miss? What? What will you not miss about going back to Game of Thrones? Um, I mean, that's, that's a good question. I, I never, <laughs> I really don't think of it in those terms. Because I think that one of the things you have to learn as an actor early on is how that whole thing about you, you get really, you have to open up to people mm -hmm. very quickly in order to do your job as an actor. You have to commit, you have to, you know, be intimate. Um, be honest with someone you might just, you know, just known. And then you spend six weeks in a movie or eight weeks or two months, four months. It's so intense. And then at the end of it, you go, by. And then maybe in this business, you'll meet again 15 years later. So it's kind of the nature of, of these things. And it takes, a, it took me years to learn that that's okay, you know. And then of course, something like Game of Thrones comes along where it's the opposite, where you actually do get to, you know, have history together. And um, so that's difficult to lose. Right. But I'm, I'm not going to, I mean, you know, it's, it's just nice to move on. So I'm going to miss the people I'm not going to miss in going back to the show because we finished it right um and then you can go well were there times when it was tough and and the weather was shit and you were stuck in 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 a mud pit somewhere yeah but it's it's kind of, it's part of the job it's not like I'm going oh no I I I don't like because I actually like that right part of e it. E especially getting thrown in a river over and over again yes. in full armor exactly that that's off. so oh Love no that. there was yeah. there was one thing Simulated I won't miss drowning. now that you so say that fun. there was there was one day that was actually my worst day ever on any <laughs> set when we had to shoot in this pool the scene when I and it and it <laughs> yeah and it was just a whole day of just falling down through the, the through the water in in armor and, and it was like claustrophobic because you know you know you can't breathe underwater so I was like I couldn't see anything I was just and it was heavy and my ears were like ah pain and then when I couldn't breathe when I needed air I had to go like this and wait for like a safety diver to come in and at the end of the day my ears were just I was a right. wreck I had to go to the hospital to have my ears checked and it was like I was like I'm never gonna do that again <laughs> and they were yeah, yeah okay okay and then, of course, we didn't end up using it. We had to reshoot it on a wire because it was too dark. <laughs> it was too dark in the water. We spent a whole day in the water and then ended up just being a wire rig. Um, anyway. There you go. But That's I'm not, not going to miss that. I'm not going to miss underwater stuff, no. Um, you know, hypothetically, uh, when this airs, we'll already be one episode into the new season. Yes. So Jamie could be dead. He could be dead. So let's look back for a second. I'd love to know, out of all the seasons, of all the amazing scenes yeah. with Jamie, what was a scene for you that is a personal favorite of Jamie Lannister and why? Um, I'll have to pick two. Go ahead. Well, there's the, the, I like the kiss by fire scene, which is like a bathtub scene with, with Jamie and Brienne because it's, it's just a, it's such a great, 
it's it's a great scene, a great reveal. He tells this the story about how he became the Kingslayer, and, he, and for the first time you see him kind of lower the shield and open up to another person and it, who's not in the family. And that was interesting. He, also he, great the dynamic change in that yes. scene as well because she stands up to you, literally. Yes, yes. When, when you run your mouth a little too yeah. far. Yeah. And that's almost like, that's I think the moment where there is a mutual, yeah. uh, you guys are on the same level at that yeah. moment and, in time. And Gwendolyn Christie is amazing uh, to work with. And another one was actually also with her. But that's another reason, it was just because it was so insane. Uh -huh. The scene in the same season <laughs> where... Uh, Brianna Tarth is in this bear pit, yeah. fighting with a, a wooden sword, and, I have, and Jamie jumps down to save her. And that was crazy, because we shot most of it in, in, in Northern Ireland, and there was no bear. And then we had to fly out here, and sh like an hour north of LA, and, sh and shoot with them, I'm just spitting out of <laughs> it's pure so right. joy. We'll put it on eBay later. <laughs> and, 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 and shoot with Bart the Bear the Second, which is this. Oh yeah, he's uh, famous. I know who he is. You know Bart, he's yeah. He's famous, yeah. Bit of a diva though. In movies uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, he's worked with the, the yeah, biggest. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, but it was, it was just, it was surreal and he's amazing. Oh no, he, he but it was so <laughs> funny. Like, I know I've told this story before, but I just found it so amazing. He, like he had this like a trailer cage, right? Well, he lived, it would be backed up to the set. And then for him to come out of his trailer, literally, the whole, I'm not making this, the whole crew had to stand going, wait, Bart, <laughs> woo! And then slowly this, this bear would come out and it would sniff. And oh, it was very important, you didn't have any candy or any, like if, if there was, a, and like crazy things, little, if any of the women in the crew, it was, if it was that time of the month, they had to leave, because he had good. Right, right, right. And then uh, a, a, a plate, of, of whipped cream would come in like on a long <laughs> stick to Bart and, and then, okay, action! And then he would do his scene. And then as soon as it was cut, everybody had to cheer, go like, yeah! And yeah. another whipped cream come in. That was quite amazing. Uh, you should take some notes from that. Next time on yeah. your rider, <laughs> before you, before cream, Nikolai comes out, whipped cream and, and a bunch applause, of people. Applause, just yeah. applause. There you go. Yeah. Um, what is, this will be cool. What is your favorite Game of Thrones scene of all time that does not include you? So purely as well, a I, fan. Well, I think I actually loved in, 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 in a lot of the stuff that happened in season one was so important because it kind of set the tone of what kind of show this was. There's a scene with Cersei and Robert Baratheon, the king and the queen, which is so domestic, where they're basically talking about, you know, you know we don't like each other and why, I mean, it, it's such a great scene and they, they play it beautifully and, and I just, it was kind of the perfect Game of Thrones scene because you have all this craziness, you know, the, the, these power struggles, all that, and then you still have just human beings trying to find their way in, 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 in crazy circumstances. So I love that scene. And then of course I think, you know, the pivotal moment was the, the make or break of the show was, was Ned Stark when he lost his head, literally, right? Literally. Because that's like, is that gonna fly with an audience? North remembers, yeah. We never forget. We never forget here up the North. Yeah, but I did see what's on your sleeve. So you know, you know, you know better. Thing, of course. Um, are you, do you watch the show all the way through? Because yeah. I know sometimes, uh, you know, actors no, don't watch I'll the watch stuff. It do you once, watch yeah. all of it? So you are a fan as well as being in it, must be very strange. No, because the, the beauty of this is that because there are so many storylines, it's yeah. not really until now where things are com coming together. But up until this point, you know, I'm in one fifth of the show, of the storyline, you know, and then the rest is all new to me. I mean, I've read it, but to see it. You're seeing it for the first you know, time. To see Battle of the Bastards when, you know, you know that, that's just epic. And I don't, I'm not, you know, I am just, you know, a fan. Who, who does Nikolai the fan, the fan, want to see on the throne and why? Well, I don't, I think, I, you know, this is maybe an easy way out, but I don't think they should, I don't think it works too well for them with that throne. I think they should kind of um, have a council of uh, various leaders right. that you would meet and, and discuss. It would be the very diplomatic very way diplomatic. of doing things. Yes. So modern and yeah, European know, of you. So yeah. modern and European. And it's crafty yeah, as well. Brexit here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Brexit. Oh, Europe. Whoa. <laughs> That's a whole other show. And <laughs> um, listen, it's so interesting that 
you know, some of the most uh, beloved characters in Game of Thrones have actually never actually seen battle together. No. Um, but as fans, we kind of fantasize about that. Mm -hmm. So here on the IMDb show, we can make fantasy a reality yes. by playing a little bit of a game. Okay. Right? I am going to give you a pairing in a classic battle bracket. Yeah. And you're going to play out in front of us who wins this battle to the death and why. Okay. You ready to roll? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Here is our first round. Oh. We have Jon Snow versus Cersei. I'll let you... I mean, come on. As a fan, just talk out loud. Like, how does this battle go down? Because don't forget, yes, he may be the more skilled fighter. She has the, the guard with her. So they come with... They're not they solo. They come with the powers. They come with they their have. powers. Yeah, of course. Well, then it's a very simple... It's a very quick thing. He is his father's son. Well, he's not really. He's that Stark's son, let's yeah. say. Yeah. Honorable. Yeah. Do things the right way. He's no match for Cersei. So Jon Snow is out. Because of the fact he's a little too goody goody yeah. two shoes and she's just so smart. Yeah. And ruthless. This will she will go up in flames or something. Yeah. He's gonna fall on his own sword. All right. John is out. And this and is, by the way, nothing to do with what happens in the show. I'm not no, this is not this a spoiler. Is this is Nikolai and me. Tim playing uh, for fun. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna put Cersei there. And she, I'm clearly biased. She yeah. wins round one right there. Okay, we'll do round two. Round two. Ooh. Daenerys. The two crazy people. And the Night King. Okay. I like that you both think, I, I actually find everyone to be a little crazy, but it's funny that you say these two are the crazy ones. Yeah. Can't wait to learn more about this fella. No. <laughs> Beautiful eyes. Uh, Just looking. So sweet. this is actually quite a good pair. This is this is, is I, you know song of ice and fire, right? Yeah. This is this is this is difficult because um, we learned that you know fire they don't like fire, right? Uh -huh. That's the thing. Um, and he's ruthless, but so is she. I mean, I this is mm. this is a hard one. Uh, but. No, I'll go with Daenerys. I think that, that the dragons will prevail in the end. Because the dragons are a game changer when he's, it comes he's to battle. He's got now. one, he's got two. He's got the big one, right? Yeah. Or is that, she's got the big one? I, I, think, I think, well, I don't know, size-wise, I've never no. met him. No, I'm but, neither have yeah. I. I saw tennis balls, but. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it, right? <laughs> but let's go with Daenerys. Okay, Daenerys yes. for this one? Because she is, she is like one of those yeah, she's a fanatic, and she can, she, you know, don't mess with her. So round two right there, yeah. and by the way, very similar, um, Daenerys and yeah. Cersei. There's a pattern here. Okay, round three. We are going for Gendry. Look familiar to you. Yeah, I, I can't see the, the hand, but I have a feeling it might I mean, be... that's you right there, Jamie Lannister. Oh, Gendry. Versus Gendry. That's, that's, uh, that's beautiful. I is mean, it very cool looking at the fact that you are a pop figure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just very cool. <laughs> I've never seen it with a golden hand. I like that. There you go. Uh, you know, I uh, clearly um, Jamie is not the fighter he used to be, and Gendry has a really. But I don't think Gendry is that much of a fighter, and I'm. I mean, I want to stay in the game, so so yeah. I'm gonna beat up Gendry. I'm so happy you said that. For a second, I would have lost the respect for you if you didn't pick no. yourself. Always no, no. back number one. Oh, yeah. I should point out, by the way, th these figures were all really easy to find, except for Jamie, because oh. Jamie is a rare exclusive uh, that you can't find anywhere. Oh wow! Yeah, did you know that? No. Yeah, you're a collector's item, my friend. Nicely done. All right, here we go. I'll remember to tell my wife. The <laughs> we have uh, Tyrion. And Arya Stark, right? Oh, here. come on, that's unfair. There you go. Well, I mean, look, Tyrion's smart. He's smart, but Tyrion's, he's no fighter. He is no fighter. He's got the scar, but he's no fighter. He's no fighter. If this is, if, if, no, he's, if he can call Daenerys for backup, but he can't. I mean, she's a, she's a, she's a sad, she's probably the, the most lethal of them all. For sure, in terms of what we've seen the her become, the skill set. She will kill him and put on his face. See? No, it's not Again, this is not a spoiler. This is just for us okay. right here. Tyrion. Goodbye, Tyrion. You did your brother like that. Well, I know, but All no, right. okay, we got three women and, and then me. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to do round two. Oh, here we so, go. So, from the very start, that'll put Cersei versus Daenerys. Oh, I can't. I, I, then talk it out. Don't forget, Nikolai. I can't it's you possibly. As a fan. Well, play it out in our heads, okay, right? right? So, I'm, she's got. Look, the truth is. Yeah. 
but those dragons, I mean, you saw what happened with the loot train sequence. These, these are like, like these are proper weapons of mass destruction. Like you, it's like how? There's nothing you can do. Like the, she's, she's got these two. Like, no, it's, it's she's nuking, she's nuking the out of it. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Yeah, no, it's um. It's okay, my liege, sire. Swear all you want. <laughs> Goodbye, Cersei. Oh man, really? Yeah, yeah I have. Well, I, I, I can't see her beating this woman. But then again, let's wait and see. I feel like. But maybe also, I really want to avoid this thing that the, the big thing about Jamie and Cersei in the end. We can't have that. I can't. I can't possibly. Oh yeah, that. that then we get into the. Then it gets tricky. This yeah, we might. Even, go, I knew this. We'll end up trending. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> but I think. Uh, Wait, was that a spoiler? No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> Who wins it? It's gonna have to be. I mean, the, it's amazing how painful yeah, this yeah, is. It is, for you. it is ridiculous. Like I'm sitting with two dolls. It's gonna have to be Daenerys with those dragons. <laughs> see how close she is to the throne now. Okay, Did already. She's, yep. She's really close. So, by the way, this is pretty interesting because you may see him as a broken man with one arm. I see him getting back into a swing yeah, of things. Yeah. Um, I wish. I wish. But I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm, unfortunately, I'm gonna. In a one-on-one -on -one battle. Yeah. Because these guys are lone operators. Yeah. Who's winning? There's no question. Arya is gonna win this one. You really think yeah. her little sword? Her the little needle? sword. But he's. He's. He has no. And you're also forgetting one thing. She just killed Shirin. She's coming uh -huh. in. As Tyrion now, mm -hmm. and he's got, hey brother, he, oh no, <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, so Jamie. This is Tyrion now. She's still Tyrion. Yeah, she comes up as hand to the queen. This is going to be interesting. Wow, it's so smart. So clearly, really, yeah, he's going to oh, have to. Oh man, go. hey, man listen. All right, all right, all right. He goes in the graveyard. It brings us down to this two right here: Arya Stark versus Daenerys and her dragons. Now this is a big bold. Uh, weapons of mass destruction, super well, the ultra thing is, assassin. Uh, I'm just thinking she's the assassin, right? That's yeah. the only way to do That's this. Her I mean, she has no... You don't see I, I, and then I guess the dragons, like... there's no... She's not gonna... But, let's say she took out Tyrion. In this game, she took out Tyrion. She's wearing Tyrion. She is Tyrion now. Hey, my queen, how are you? Oh, Tyrion, uh, 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 I want to kill some more with my dragons. Uh, where's, where's John? John? Oh, he died. And now you're dead, too. <laughs> Done. And Arya Stark stands on the throne. Yeah. There you go. Um, I want to say thank you for not just playing with dolls, but making this super entertaining I love playing as with well. Dolls. This is like <laughs> back when I was a kid. I was playing with This isn't the first time. This is not your first oh, no, time no, playing with dolls. Oh, no, no. It's not the first time. Nicely done. That sits Arya at the top of the throne. Yeah. Um, Game of Thrones is so popular. The fans are super devoted. We wanted to ask them on Twitter a question for you. Okay. They sent it in. We picked the best one. It's pretty good. At Ricky's Mishi wants to know, who do you think Jamie values the most in Game of Thrones, excluding himself? Oh, I think it's a little tricky. I, uh -huh. th I, I think he feels his, his brother betrayed him when he, uh, when he helped him escape because he kind of killed their papa. Uh -huh. um, but I would have said Tyrion, but I think at the end of the day, the one he values the most, or oh, that's values the most, I was going to say trust. Values. Yeah, values. It's, it's a, it's a toss-up, right? It, you know. Well, trust is interesting. I don't actually think it's a family member. <laughs> Here's me telling you. No, no, I know, but I, Brienne of I Trust is clearly, really, yeah. I mean, it's trust. I think he trusts but, but Brienne, think, but it's the value, the value is different. So break it down. Who but does I, but value? also now I'm, I'm kind of, because, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's a tricky question to answer truthfully because of the upcoming season. But I, per I think it's okay for you to talk about... I think he values... Okay, let's just go there. I'm yeah. going to do the safe. Uh, he values his brother the most, Tyrion. Tyrion? Yeah. Okay, well now... I don't want to have to choose between Brienne or Cersei. On camera, anyway. Uh, this is... But i got to tell you, this is so much fun for me right <laughs> now. I'm loving it. There's one thing I you haven't asked me about, which I thought I was going to be asked about. The whole... The theory of the Aso Ahai, the chosen one. <laughs> okay. On. No, no, I can ask it right now. Right. Tell me about the theory. Well, the theory is that there's one, one man or woman will be the chosen, will end the whole thing, will be the Aso Ahai. 
It's in the books that George R. R. Martin wrote, but it's not in the show. And they've never mentioned it in the show until, uh, well, I think I can... S there is a new character called Bielsa, B-I-E-E-L-S-A, who uh, is just uh, an amazing visionary and, uh, and in some ways savior. Uh, who is Bielsa? Well, Bielsa is, is all that's good in this world, but you're going to have to watch the show to find out. Bielsa. Bielsa. All right, Jamie. All right. <laughs> that's it? That's all you're giving me? That's all I'm giving, but I, I, I would look it up if I was you. But uh, Bielsa, in Bielsa we trust is, is a saying, and I think we should have that trending on Twitter. In Bielsa we trust. Consider it done. Thank you. What do you watch at home? You're big. I mean, you watch Game of Thrones, obviously. <laughs> I, well, Are you yeah. a movies guy or a TV show guy? I'm 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 good story guy. Okay, fair enough. Um, I right now I'm I'm watching these. I mean I've i I'm a big fan of these two comedies and and uh, it's Veep and Barry, and I'm in heaven these days because it's back. The only problem is that I can't wait. You know, usually there's so much. You know that thing binge watching. It's so fun yeah. when you have like I've got four half yeah. hours now. Thousand percent. And I can't wait. Because, you know, they're coming out every Sunday. I, I, and, and, I mean, Barry is Bill Hader and the whole gang. I just find it, it's, it's brilliant. Don't you love Henry Winkler? Yes, well, <laughs> yes, he's amazing. The best acting coach in the business. Oh, oh no, it's a completely side note. Who is the biggest name, someone that you're a fan of, that has walked up to you and said, I love Game of Thrones? Um, because I know the fandom of this goes all the way to the top. Well, yesterday I was at the... At the uh, at the American Country Music Awards, and and the host Reba came up to me, and that was pretty. That was pretty your special. Reba? Yeah. Wow. Okay. That was special for you. Well, I was just yeah. I love that. Um, what else are you watching? So we got Veep. Veep and Barry. We got Barry. Tell us real quick. What do you love about Veep? This is uh, now coming into its final <sighs> season. What's not? To, she is a genius, Julia Lewis Dreyfus, and then but the whole thing. Everyone's at the top of their game. I mean, it's. It's smart, it's quick, it's, yeah, what's not to love? And the fact that they were able to, to keep the quality after the creator left is, is just amazing. But they did. And I love it. And, and now it's, 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 because it's always been a little ahead of, of, of what goes on in, in you know, it's, it's a satire in the political world. And now, of course, we've had this weird couple of years where it seems like they're behind, I mean, they, how can they top what's going on? Right in the real world, but they can. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a great start to the last season. I think it's the final season as well. Yes, it is. Then I just saw another show. This is not a television show. Escape from Denimora, which I, just blew me out of this. The miniseries. Yes. Yo, you know who directed that? Ben Stiller. Right. And I also, because of that, I had to find this podcast with Ben Stiller. Uh -huh. And it was, just, it was just interesting. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm now officially I actually a Ben think Stiller fan. Next to Paul Dano, next to uh, Benicio Del Toro, uh, Patricia Arquette's performance oh, in that amazing is on it's, another planet. But th that's that's the thing. It's so you know that I don't want to use the word because it, that's ridiculous. But it's because I was going to say it's so brave, but it's not. It's exactly she's just doing her job. But there's no what do you call it? Uh, it's so honest. It's so raw, and it's so wonderful to see her. Just she's playing. Um, I mean, I'm talking about this person as a per in a way, a, a very uh, unattractive woman on yeah. every level. You know, she's just, what the hell is wrong with her? Like, you know what I mean? Like, unattractive, like also the way she is, the way she manipulates the people, the way that, like, she treats, like, when uh, her ex-husband, when she, you know, that she sets up the Oh, yeah, but by the way, I he's mean, brilliant, and the way oh, that yeah, she yeah, sets but, him up, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. Uh, but that performance, out of out of this world. Give me a movie. Yes. Are you a movie-going guy? I, I, yes, I know. Um, I'm, can you even still go to the movies yes, anymore? Yes, of course I can. Can you? Listen, you I can get go. recognized for sure. Yeah, but but you don't, I don't, you just Do you go out in relax. disguise? I, what? Do you have to go out in disguise? God, I should tell you. No, I don't. You don't? I, don't. <laughs> I really don't. No, you just, no, it, it is what you make it. I mean, you can, you can, you don't have to go to the biggest multiplex, you know. No, but my, my point is, 
I'm not kidding. Game of Thrones is loved not in just in America and England. No, I know, I know. I, in the I, most like, random two weeks of ago, I, I was I was with the UN in Rwanda, and I was like not expecting Game of Thrones to be big in Rwanda. It's massive in massive. Rwanda, so it's everywhere. You're right, but most. I mean, I, I rarely meet anyone who's not nice. Right. I mean, so it's it's well, not a. It's, you're the you know. His, yeah, he's the he's prince. the guy who jacks his sisters. Or what's not to like? <laughs> um, give me a movie. What movie are you excited for? Like, where do you have... Where are you, like, turning into a little boy again? Oh, I mean, the Tarantino movie that's coming out. Uh, once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Of, uh, my biggest... I mean, the, my movie number one of all time is Once Upon a Time in America with, uh, by um, Sergio Leone. The, the, uh, the one that's as original to the director's cut, which was... Like a four hour, four hour something movie. So it was, it was two movies. And that thing, and we, we talked about this before the show, but I like going, because I remember going to the movie and there was an intermission, then you came. I mean, right. I love that. When the storytelling is great, it doesn't matter how long it is. Uh, and then, of course, Tarantino, who's, who's, who's been, you know, since Reservoir Dogs, always come out with interesting movies. Always. It's always there's something. They're not all as great as the others, but they're, but they're all interesting. They're all unique, and uh, they're all Tarantino. They're all Tarantino, and of course, this time in in his, in, in 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 you know it's late sixties, right? The whole yep. surrounding the, Around the Charlie the plan, Manson, yeah, Charlie and Manson, and, and that, that it just it seems uh, ripe for storytelling, and and also the, the, it's a great trailer. Also, and it's got DiCaprio, DiCaprio, and Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Yeah. And so many other great ones. Seeing those two on, on, on film together is going to be really, mm-hmm. really special. Um, is it? What, what are you excited about? Do you have any movies like what For you me, go? it's like, honestly, not just because you're here, super excited for, for Game of Thrones coming back. Just It's been such a huge part of my life over the last few years. Sure. It's really nice to naturally wrap it up. Yeah. Um, but uh, Avengers, Endgame. It's end nearly game. here. Yeah, it comes out at the end of this month. I'm probably going to see it in a couple of weeks. That is uh, literally up there with my Game of Thrones anticipation. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm super into it. And talk about it, you like long movies. That's going to be over three hours. <laughs> but I, but I, it's, it's like I like great movies. I don't, like, you know, it's not like, do you ever look like, oh, God, this is a, this is 109 minutes. I'm not going to go watch that. No, no never, it's about. Never. What do you, now you've got. But sometimes, thing, yeah. especially with those big tentpole movies, they are too long. Where you kind of sit there and you go, okay, I understand this. You spent, you have a sequence now. I remember that. Do you remember the King Kong movie Peter Jackson did? Yes. And there was a sequence with dinosaurs running down, yes. chasing, and it just kept on forever. It felt like forever for me. This is just my experience. And I was thinking, I was thinking someone must have thought we should cut this. And then someone said, we spent $40 million on those dinosaurs. Use it. This is going to stay mm-hmm. in the movie. I, I'm pretty sure that happens all the time. Anyway. Um, we're coming to the end. I want to ask you this just purely because it's interesting to me. Uh, Game of Thrones, you know, you get to put this to, to rest now. So now, but you're not like, you know, 80 years old. You've got a whole career ahead of yeah. you. And so it's probably super, you will always be known as Jamie Lannister to us, the fans. Sure. So picking your next, like I watched Shot Caller and I thought that was a really, you want to talk about Brave Choice? That was a really cool Great choice movie. and cool yeah, movie. No, I, what, are you, what are we going to see you do next? Well, it's, I also saw The Other Man. The other woman. Yeah, the other woman, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's a whole different thing. No, I, I mean, I've been working. I, I also like to, to work back in Europe. Uh, I just shot two movies. I also did a, I did a documentary uh, this, you know, August, September. I traveled all over Greenland. Uh, it was something completely different, but again, s- storytelling. <clears throat> it's about telling great stories. I'm looking okay. for great stories. I'm going to go do a, a thriller now called The Silencing. Um, so... Just keep going. Of course, as you say, the phenomenon, the Game of Thrones reach and all that, I don't think you, any of us will ever experience that again. Um, and that will, you know, I'm going to carry that forever. That's great. But for me, you know, I've, it's been an, another job. It's been a, it had a huge impact. But every season, every year, I shot one or two other movies while doing Game of Thrones. So it's never felt like, okay, now that ended. It's always felt like, well, okay, this, I'm not going to do that now, but I'm still going to do all the other stuff. So uh, what's, keep going. What's one thing that you know now, right, after all these years, that you wish if you could have a time-traveling machine, go back and meet 
Nikolai from at the very beginning of Game of Thrones, great piece of advice you'd give him that other people can learn from? Well, I think it's, it's well, Game of Thrones, but it, it kind of goes back to, in a way, when I talked to you about the pilot and how lucky we were that he got picked up and that it even happened. You never know. And the whole idea as a young actor to think that you can plan, okay, if I get into like a, a studio movie, that means I can do this, or like these days, well, okay, I'll get into an HBO show. You never know. Just go with what you feel is interesting. And then, you know, enjoy, you know, doing what you, what you love doing. What happens after? Will it be a hit? Will people respond to it? You never know, because there's so many factors. Even if you make a great, you, you know, you, you've seen, we've all seen so many amazing movies of course. that never reach an audience. Like you suddenly you sit there, oh, what's this? And you go, oh, this is amazing. Why didn't this become, you never know. Just, you yeah, know, that's, that's, that's the, the, the rule. One step Nikolai. Sire, Lord, it is an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming by the show. It means so much to all of us, to all the fans as well. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure watching you on that show. Can't wait to see the ending. And thanks for uh, not dropping any spoilers on the show. Nikolai, thank you so much. Well, if maybe you, I did. You'll yeah, find out. Soon find out. If you haven't heard, you can also watch every episode on HBO Now and HBO Go. If you want more interviews with stars from your favorite TV shows and movies, go to imdb.com slash show, rate the show, Add it to your watch list and check out all of our previous episodes. Some amazing guests on there.